in the year 2006, Sony released their third major console, the PS3. This wasn't just any console, hidden inside was a feature so powerful that even the US military used it to build a supercomputer, so why would Sony remove a feature like that? Well, the answer might not be what you expect. The feature in question is called Other OS, and as the name implies, gave you the ability to install, well, other operating systems on your PS3. Other OS was included with the fat PS3 models at launch up until 2010. Most people used it to install Linux distributions alongside the PS3's own game OS, giving it a unique edge against its competitors like the Wii and the Xbox 360 and the PS3 really needed that edge. Despite being a darling of most gamers today, me included, back then many people skipped it. Can you guess why? People were looking for cheaper alternatives. Most bought the way cheaper Xbox 360, which also released earlier and became the entry point into the next generation, albeit with a cost of its own. But other OS still had its dedicated users. Some used it to run retro emulators, others used it as their main PC, and even crazier, the US Air Force used the PS3's other OS feature to build a supercomputer. Despite the PS3's high price point, it was still cheaper to buy hundreds of PS3s than to build a traditional supercomputer. But this begs the question, why? Why did Sony ship their consoles with this feature, especially when giving such deep access could risk the console being cracked wide open? Was it because Sony really loved their customers that much? Of course not! Some of you may already know that this wasn't the first time Sony allowed Linux on their consoles. The PS2 also had an official Linux kit, but why? Tax avoidance. Yeah, that's it. You see, back then, there were extra taxes on consoles sold in Europe. But if your console was classified as a computer, you could avoid these taxes. By adding Linux support, Sony could claim the PS3 was a computer and get a tax break. Of course, Sony also claimed was to attract developers and give them a sandbox to experiment with the cell processor. That was probably true to some extent, but the main reason was to save money. However, giving hackers such an open platform was risky. And soon, Sony would realize just how risky. In 2010, Sony did the unthinkable on April 1st, and no, it was not an April Fool's joke, they removed other OS with firmware update 3.21. But why you may ask now? This is George Hotz, more widely known as Geo Hot. In 2007, at just 17 years old, he became the first person to jailbreak the iPhone. Geo Hot is, well, a genius. And his next target was the PS3. According to Sony, the PS3 was unhackable. But as we all know, statements like these never age well. Many hackers saw it as a challenge. Geo Hot was one of them, and he succeeded. He published exploits that granted access to the PS3's hypervisor. This meant root access, in other terms, installing custom firmware, homebrew apps, and yes, pirated games became possible. Our friends at Sony obviously didn't want that, especially the last part, because that's evil. And unlike people on a certain list, here, the authorities wanted people to get punished for their crimes. In January 2011, they filed a lawsuit against GeoHot for bypassing the PS3's security measures and violating the DMCA. And you know what else our friends at Sony have done? They have forced PayPal to hand over the information of who had donated to GeoHot. Seriously, how did people still trust Sony after this? This is crazy. Anyway, the case was settled out of court. GeoHot wasn't allowed to publish anything more regarding the exploit. But what about the users? Feature the PS3 was advertised with is now removed. Users felt betrayed. Can you blame them? Imagine having a PC. Now it's gone. And it wasn't an intruder that stole it from you. No, it was the very corporation that broke their promise and took away what they had sold you. Very ahead of the curve, Sony. People were furious. They had to make a choice. Refuse to update and keep other OS, lose PSN access and online features, or update the console and lose other OS 
OS forever. For the average gamer, this was an easy choice. Many didn't realize what they had lost. For those who relied on Linux, it was devastating. Soon, a class action lawsuit was filed against Sony. However, in 2011, a federal judge dismissed it, claiming the plaintiffs failed to allege the facts to hold Sony liable. Yeah, because removing a clearly advertised feature isn't obvious enough, right? But in 2014, this decision was overturned. In 2016, Sony settled with users who were negatively impacted by the removal of other OS. Those consisted of users who bought the PS3 because of other OS and those who had Linux installed on that PS3. The final settlement came in 2017, with participants of the lawsuit receiving around $65 each. This whole debacle sparked a huge controversy. Sony lost the goodwill they had built with developers and enthusiasts. Initially, many blamed Geohot for the removal, but over time, people realized he was only defending consumer rights, the right to use the console you bought however you want. Ironically, the removal of other OS became the main reason the PS3 ended up being hacked fully, but that is a story for another time. Today, other OS is back on PS3 consoles through custom firmware and users can install Linux on their PS3s again, something I've covered in a previous episode if you're interested. So, what do I think about all of this? Sony's decision was shitty. I didn't experience it firsthand, but I can imagine how frustrating it must have been to lose something you use daily. I mean, it is something we experience now more than ever, and actually owning something in many cases feels like a distant memory at this point. The things we thought we owned ends up being taken away. Isn't that so Ubisoft? But on the bright side, the jailbreak that followed opened the PS3 to an amazing modding scene and consequently brought other OS back. And now that we seem to actually own less and less, I feel better than ever doing that certain something these corporations despise so much. So that's a happy ending after all. This is the first time I uploaded an episode about tech history and I have to say I enjoyed this far more than anything I've previously uploaded. There are so many other topics I would love to talk about. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. And if you like what you've seen, consider liking and subscribing. Have fun modding. Thanks for watching.